Okay, good morning to all of you, all the participants uh, um, joined for this uh, webinar. And uh, the session is on uh, supply chain management during pandemic. It's a very interesting uh, topic and a great topic. So I'll be covering some of the important aspects of supply chain management, how uh, supply chain management can be understood uh, from the point of view of pandemic, and how to <clears throat> manage this uh, supply chain during this pandemic and also how actually it is going to be managed in future pandemics also. So here the um, thanks to Professor R. Saradan, principal of SCT Institute of uh, Arts and Science and uh, thanks to Kavya for uh, having a nice introduction. And before we start uh, this presentation, <clears throat> let us see, uh, I, I think the most of the participants will be having idea about uh, what is supply chain management? And based on the supply chain management concepts, I'm not going to uh, give you about uh, what is supply chain and all. Just only one slide I'm going to give you supply chain. Then we'll move on to what are the supply chain uh, disruptions that are going to happen during this uh, pandemic. And then we'll see how do we create a, 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 a resilient a supply chain and uh, what kind of risks the supply chain is going to have. And as a supply chain manager or professionals, how do we uh, combat all these uh, disruptions during this pandemic or any kind of uh, disruptions that are going to happen in future. And also we'll see how uh, a digital supply chain management, supply chain 4.0 is going to help the, the current supply chains uh, apart from uh, traditional uh, supply chain management. And we'll see at the end regarding uh, what are the strategies regarding uh, uh, the supply chain, what are the strategies that can be followed and how a supply chain is transforming into a new normal supply chain and how uh, what kind of uh, things people should know. As uh, faculty members, of course, industry people, they are involved in supply chain management and what kind of uh, issues they're going to face, they know very well and uh, they're able to manage substantially. But from the teaching point of view, academic point of view, so students should know what are the areas to focus in supply chain management. Apart from theoretical building, so we should also know the practical issues and we have to develop the students and the supply chain management course into the next level instead of teaching the basics and all other things. Fine. Now with this, uh, now can we start uh, the supply chain uh, presentation? Yes, sir, we may start, sir. Okay, the, now uh, please go to the first slide uh, that is uh, supply chain, what is the supply chain movement to start with? Fine, this is, are you able to see me? Hello? Yes, sir, yes, sir. People are able to see your slide, yes, sir. So, so in the first slide, if you see the supply chain management for the beginners, the first time who are um, visiting this uh, webinar, so they know what is a supply chain. So, so people know about what is supply chain we are already seeing during this uh, lockdown. So hope you are all uh, really witnessing the, the supply chain, effects of supply chain, because, because, because of this uh, lockdown mm -hmm. period sitting at home, and how you are going to manage the supply chain, how you are going to manage household activities, how you are going to manage food, particularly food, the food supply chain. So these are all things that uh, you should know what is the background behind all these things. So here, the supply chain concept, if you want to know, the supply chain is the network of organizations that are involved through upstream and downstream linkages in the different processes and activities that are involved to produce value in the form of products and services in the hands of ultimate consumer. In supply chain, if you see any supply chain, there are many, many supply chains. So for, so for, for the sake of uh, understanding, you have a food supply chain, a grey supply chain, and you have uh, electronic supply chains, Samsung supply chain, and you have Ericsson mobile supply chains and Apple supply chain. So each company or industry is going to have its uh, own supply chain. 
like Pepsi company supply chain. These are all top supply chains in the world. Nestle supply chain, the food supply chains, and Nike, Nike supply chain, and Intel supply chain, and Col Col Colgate Palmol supply chain, and Cisco systems supply chain, and you have a Unilever supply chain, and Walmart supply chain, McDonald food supply chain again, supply chain. and then you have a Procter & Gamble supply chain, and pharmaceutical supply chain. This is very important nowadays in the healthcare, since it's the entire supply chain that we are talking about because of the public health pandemic. The pandemic, the COVID-19 outbreak is related to public health supply chain. So how these supply chains really interacting. And if you see Domino's pizza supply chain and Starbucks supply chain and uh, Pepsi company supply chain, Alibaba supply chain, these are all different uh, supply chains. Uh, just I'm giving you idea about different uh, supply chains. And in the, all the supply chains, there are three important flows. One is the physical flow, that is movement of material, and storage of materials and goods. And then information flow, that is coordinating, sharing information between the partners, stakeholders, and how do you control information and disseminate information from day to day, from minute to minute, from time to time, from the long-term plans. And another flow is that is financial flow, which is very crucial. So how do you manage that financial flow? So most of the supply chains are now facing the financial flows. So these flows are any disruption in the flows is going to have a supply chain disruption. So how do you manage these disruptions is very important, a critical challenge for all supply chain managers. But as a students, they should know what are the practical aspects. They should understand, they should focus uh, to be able to get into companies tomorrow, face the challenge. So instead of, uh, um, they should have a, before joining into a company, they should have an idea about what kind of problems a supply chain is going to have. And the logistics is uh, heart of supply chain. So entire logistics, the entire supply chain is based on logistics, the movement of material, movement and storage of material, and, and acquiring, storing, and transporting sources. So the, all transportation is blocked now. The entire uh, transportation activity is blocked. And the internal transportation and external transportation and transportation between countries, everything, the airports, the airline supply chain is uh, mostly affected. And other truck companies and other fleet managers, all transportation activities are blocked because of this pandemic. But the transportation activity, logistics activity is the key element as heart of a central negotiation of the supply chain. But it is stopped now because this is a total disruption. There is no flow of material except information flow is there, but there is no flow of material and there is no flow of uh, um, goods and uh, there is no um, st storing of material. So in this case, the supply chain movement activities like uh, it is going to have marketing and new product development, finance and customer services. So all this, uh, the value chain, if you talk about value chain, the entire value chain is going to be affected. So in this case, in this situation, how do you understand the supply chain disruptions? That's very important. Once you understand the supply, what are the different and number of disruptions that you have encountered during this pandemic? And if you understand the supply chains, uh, supply chain disruptions very carefully, you can find out what are the risks involved. So these risks, how do you mitigate the risk? That's very important. If you see, this is uh, uh, the next slide. If you see, the supply chains are broken. The supply chains are fragile. All supply chains are fragile. And supply chain, how do you connect it? How do you reconnect it? And see, if you see, people are the, the experts the supply chain professionals, industry experts, they are trying to see how do we see that the link has to be reconnected. And they have to reconnect the link. They have to rethink the, the supply chains. They have to redesign the supply chains. And they have to rebuild the structure of the supply chain. And they should be responsive. How do we, we respond to the, quickly respond to the customer requirements, quickly respond to the requirements of the market. And all these things are leading to re-transforming the current supply chains into a new normal supply chain. And that supply chain, we are going to see how we are going to see in the next slide.
what are the problems before we see the problems before we see the problems there are manufacturers and there's brands and many people supply chain professionals industry people they are already rethinking what are the ways what are the new ways to make this industry to run even as the covid 19 or any pandemonium that is that has already fast developed into every nook and corner of the world and then this supply chain disruptions are you can say that the problem areas the problem areas if you think of the first problem area is delays in production and distribution and also the delays in the deliveries delay in the service all these things are going to happen because of all the disruptions disruption in the sense the transportation and storage activity and supply and demand the moment you talk about supply chain the supply and demand how do you balance the supply and demand that is the the secret of supply chain success for any company so in this disruption this pandemic pandemic the covid 19 outbreak on the lockdown period the supply is crash the supply is pressed or you can say the supply is having a problem demand is having a problem so the how the supplies are blocked supply these got supply shocks the supplies are limited supplies but demand is very high so this kind of situation we are going to face how do you balance this uh, supply and demand so sometimes demand is going to be increased sudden the surge in demand how do we see the surge in demand how do you manage this demand how do you manage the supplies so what kind of decisions you have to take that's very important so this because of this supply and demand mismatch a lot of delays in production and disruption is happening and distribution problem is happening and free flow of material is obstructed and these disruptions are simply obstructions are disturbances into the flow of supply chain so the supply chain is a continuous seamless flow of material from suppliers to customers through a production activity and retailers and wholesalers so now the second problem that you can see is expensive inventories so the inventories are very expensive if you keep more keeping the demand is high and keep more inventories across the supply chain so so the supply chain you will be having uh, inventories are going to pile up and that is going to lead bull beef effect and inventory how much inventory you require what is the stock stock levels that you are going to maintain that's also very important important point to be considered and also one more thing lack of partners coordination so the partners the retailers wholesalers and suppliers and producers and suppliers 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 tier one supplier tier two supplier and tier three suppliers all the entire chain a big chain so there should be a coordination that from the customer demand the customer demand has to be transformed real time information sharing should happen across all the partners so that you can minimize the risk and also the inventories can be maintained so that's why the lack of partners coordination in terms of coordinating the information in terms of sharing the resources in terms of sharing the materials all these things are going to happen and uncertainties in deliveries because of this problems in supply chain supply side so there are and deliveries are delayed a delay in deliveries and that leads to customer dissatisfaction so and also the deliveries are because the, the transportation network is blocked so the deliveries are going to happen in different modes so how we are going to face this uh, uncertainties in deliveries poor demand forecast and also you have to see that supply chain demand forecast whatever forecast that we have based on the past data that is not going to be followed whenever you have a disruption you have to see that what is a realistic forecast keeping in your localized conditions and then you have to see what are the stocks to be maintained and how you are going to schedule your production and how you are going to satisfy the customers that's very important and interface with inter interference with production if you see the interference with production this is a very important aspect so there are there are supply shocks in the sense that the production problems so production delay will be there due to material non availability due to labor problem or due to the machine problem or due to some other equipment problem so all these things are leading to the disruption or inter interruption to the production that also a, a kind of problem along the supply chain 
So ultimately, the quality is also very important. Poor quality. So poor quality is also the supply chain problem. So the quality, the poor quality leads to machine problems, or material raw material problems, or maybe due to process problems. There are various problems. Are there. So this poor quality is also one of the problems supply chain. So if you see the poor quality, so if you see that uh, the the pandemic COVID-19 has the genesis in Wuhan, China. And what happens, the equipment, the medical equipment, they supplied during this uh, pandemic uh, to different countries like India and other countries. So what happened, the quality of the material is poor of this medical equipment, medical devices. So the masks, you can say, are uh, equipment. So these things, because of these things, the supply chain it is a problem in the supply chain. And quality is also very important that leads to customer satisfaction. If you go to the next slide, let us see mainly the disruption. Disruption is a major breakdown or major interruption in the production or distribution of supply chain. And it is can be fire, is a pandemic we are talking about, and machine breakdown, natural disasters, and quality issues, and unexpected surge in the capacity. All these things we have discussed in the previous slide. So these are all disruptions. And there may be many other disruptions but how we can see these disruptions really impact in the supply chain efficiency and effectiveness. Of course, if you see, despite numerous supply chain problems, upheavals by the disasters in the last decade, if you see the eruption of volcano in Iceland and Japanese earthquake and tsunami and Thailand floods, hurricanes in Mario and Harvey. So these uh, these uh, the disasters happened earlier, but uh, these disasters are the companies, the supply chain companies, the supply chain supply chains. So they they are able to manage all these things within a certain period of time. But what happened is the most of the companies still themselves unprepared. There is no supply chain preparedness plan. Preparedness plan is missing here in this link. That's why the supply chain disruptions are going to happen. So how are you going to combat these supply chain disruptions? So if you see in the next slide, then you can understand the supply chain disruptions are very costly, as you know. So the disruption and impact and recovery time, if you see past, and then uh, um, coming to the global electronics manufacturers. So Japan's Kumamoto earthquake, that is April 2016, happened. The impact is 16% uh, drop in revenue and 66% drop in the net income. And if you see the global computer mark maker and US-China trade war, that is 2018, happened. And this is 15% drop in the share price and, uh, and $1 billion lost market cap. And uh, automaker, automaker industry, if you see Thailand flats, 5% reduction in global output and then $5 billion last year. So all these things, the recovery time is happening one year and less than three months and six months. Now, this pandemic, if you see how long it is, it's, it's unable to predict how much. So people are saying eight months or one year or three months like that. But unless you have vaccine, unless you have vaccine, you cannot predict it. So it will be, it will be continuing, but the intensity, the flattening of the curve is going to happen. People are predicting, the experts are predicting the flattening of the curve, but uh, it may take six months or maybe eight months. If you see the next slide, so these disruptions are causing different uh, outcomes, weakening the demand for some companies. So some companies, they don't have demand because there is no supply. So, they, so, so here, they have, to, they have to reduce their demand and uh, they have the, the demand for the some com, some products are going to be reduced because the people are very intelligent because people will be giving preference to the products which are very important essential commodities and people will not go for purchasing cars people will not go for purchasing furniture costly furniture people are not going for any clothes and, uh, and garments and uh, these are all the things so that's why that the, 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 there is a weakening demand for some of the products of the companies then skyrocketing demand for select companies. So there sometimes you have um, mass, the demand for mass is increasing and demand for uh, vegetables increasing and demand for 
other essential commodities increase. So like that, the cycle so demand is going to increase, and creating uncertainty in obtaining raw materials. And this supply chain disruption is uh, there is no continuity of instead of uh, the government is taking all these steps to see that the material should be available, the food supply chain is going to be activated, but uh, there is no continuity of supply and there is a lot of uncertainty. So that's why the demand is going to increase, and also impacting the ability to ship and receive products on time due to shortages and logistics bottlenecks. Since the logistics is going to play a crucial role, and shipment deliveries, the shipment is going to be delayed, and also the product availability is going to be different, and it takes a lot of time. And you can see the workforce is very important. So the workforce. Capacity to assemble and ship products. So sometimes the material is available and transportation activity is there. Trucks are available, but the workforce is important for loading and unloading and all these things. So today we are witnessing the construction supply chain, how they are people are going away because there is no work and also there is no food available for them and they want to go back. So whenever this this disruption is a big disruption to the construction industry and also some other. Uh, textile and other uh, labor intensive industries so most of the companies during this pandemic uh, so their productions are halted halted in the production no production at all and whatever stocks they are having they are able to uh, push out but whenever so some companies like if you see uh, pharmaceutical companies the essential uh, products uh, drugs manufacturing they are able to run those, those plants with a, a minimum labor Minimum labor, and that is also creating a lot of problems. The recent uh, disaster that happened yesterday, that is, day before yesterday, that is, Vijag uh, LG polymers. So, whenever you halt the production activity, supply activity, the manufacturing plants to restart, restart the operations is going to be very difficult. Very difficult. That itself a great challenge for the industries to get back because uh, this uh, workforce. Availability. There is no proper supervision. There is no proper handling. There is no proper maintenance that is happening. So these are all different uh, disruptions that you can see. Then the next slide, if you see some small cases, if you see the Samsung, Samsung has uh, different plants at its home country of South Korea, and also previously they have diversified its smartphone production to Vietnam and India while maintaining uh, while maintaining components from China. But at this pandemic was broad enough to still disrupt Samsung smartphone products. Though they are um, they anticipated that uh, their production activity, mainly the components are uh, production activities to Vietnam and diversifying into India, but still they are having a lot of disruption because the components from China they have to receive, and they since they have alternate elements, but still they are having a disruption in the. Samsung smartphone production. If you see the other case, these are all different big case to case are there. And if you go through the case studies, you can see what kind of uh, how they have, how their revenues have fall down and uh, what kind of uh, workforce that is required and what is the investment that is uh, required to to normalize the situation. All these things. And if you see the second uh, situation that the Vistron Corporation. Is one of the Apple's uh, suppliers, uh, components of suppliers. Uh, they told that uh, half of its capacity could be located outside China by 2021. So this is the decision that is going to be taken, and the company is now looking for uh, India operations and Vietnam and Mexico. So a lot of scope is there for India, uh, for many companies, multinational companies setting up in India. But the government is also having some regulations to so see that how they have to take. All security measures and permissions and regulations. So the, the manufacturing activities is going to increase enormously in India. So that's why the supply chain activities are very important. And so the, there's a lot of potential for the supply chain activities and see that how India can take up this challenge. If you see the third case in the next slide, Foxconn, a company that is electronics manufacturing contract manufacturer. It is having its assembly plants located in mainly mainland China, produce for many world-leading electronics companies 
Apple Intel and so on. So this is also uh, affected. This is also affected uh, with respect to supply chain uh, disruptions. And they are able to manage to the maximum extent, but the revenues have fallen drastically. And if you see in the next strategy, so if you go on looking at the disruptions, disruptions happening in Indian supply chains and uh, the global supply chains, all these things. But what are the strategies? What are the strategies that you can see uh, combating the disruption? This is very important because the, all these things are going to prepare for supply chain disaster preparedness. This is all these things leading to supply chain disaster preparedness plan. So those, those, even though the earlier disasters that have happened, but this pandemic is uh, affecting almost 215 countries, 215 countries. So it is a big chain and uh, the supply chain is now enormous and how the countries are connected and how the materials and components, products and sub assemblies and all these things are going to be very, very important. So if you see, the strategies, some of the strategies combating this disruption is uh, the stockpile inventory. This is one strategy stockpile inventory. So maintain the inventory level. Maintain the inventory level of uh, critical components or finished goods. So critical components inventory has to maintain higher than the operationally necessary to provide buffer against potential disruptions. So you should be, all these things will happen because of the supply chain information sharing, information coordination between the partners. So that based on this, you can maintain only the stocks related to the components or products that are required or critical components should be maintained. And also the size of the stockpile. So each, each company is going to have how much size, how much quantity they can you know, stock it. That is also very important. And the location, where they do locate and what kind of replenishment they have how much lead time they are going to have, all these things should be taken into account. Then only they have to maintain the right stocks. And sometimes you have short duration, frequently failure items, or long duration, short duration frequently items keep more stock. Rare items that are required that you keep lesser stocks. Like that you have to categorize different stocks and different items different components in the inventory. This is the first first uh, uh, disruption. This is simple to understand. And then coming to diversify the supply base. This is very important. And most of the supply chains are doing it. Most of the supply chain is diversifying the supply base. So diversifying the supply base, mostly you go for multiple suppliers. Normally supply chain says that uh, any supply chain, so lean supply chain are uh, few suppliers are required. But if you diversify the suppliers, increase the supplier base, then automatically this disruption, disruption can be minimized. And here you, sh you should see the multiple suppliers. What's a single supplier? Single supplier in this pandemic situation, single supplier, if he cannot supply and you say he's got total disruption, production activity is going to hamper and there's no finished parts and we are meeting, we are the, not meeting the demand and you're losing the customer. So that's why you have to see, the, mostly if you better see the different locations. And also network configuration, this is very important. To have a, a supply base, diversifying supply base, you should have a network supply, network configuration. This configuration is very important to manage the demand. And here there are two, there are two things you have to, supply chain to network configuration, you have to map the supply chain. You have to map the supply. How do you map the supply chain? Suppose if it's a global supply chain, tax implications, tax regulations, and availability of resources. And again, you have to see the transportation modes, transportation, how you are going to select the transportation mode. All these things, you have to see that. Sometimes single item, multiple suppliers, or multiple items, multiple suppliers will be there. So if you share, this is a shared supplier concept. When you are having a diversifying supply base, share supplier concept. Some so many items are going to be supplied by single supplier. That also leads to disruption. And uh, many items supplied by many suppliers. Then you can see who are the suppliers that you can have a contract. 
this is very important this is the second uh, the strategy that you can see and third strategy is develop backup supplies so this is a backup supplies in the sense local supplies so you have to so the, 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 when you go for a local supplies so you have a cost advantage also so that's why the backup supplies are also very important so, so for some of the items and then coming to the manage product demand this is very important manage product demand if the so there are sometimes our supply side is difficult supplies so some, sometimes some of the products which cannot be manufactured because of supply side problem so those products you, you you have to you have to see that those products can be sold at lesser quantity and what are the products that are that you can continuously manufacture without any supply disruptions those products you have to uh, you, you have to see that those products can be sold and you, that's why that's that's called managing the demand managing the demand the products that you are going to manufacture and you have to you have to see that you have to convince the customers the suppliers the, the supply of products which are not which are hampered by the supply side of the supply chain so you have to convince the suppliers and you have to maintain the supplier relationship you can maintain the customer relationship that's why you can say switching and rationing there are two kinds of uh, when you are managing product demand switching and rationing switching is going to be only products not having supply chain constraints those products you have to manufacture and get remote revenue and rationing is you can see top level customers only you take into consideration and satisfy the demand for the top level customers so that the, those customers are loyal to you so this is how the manage the product demand and coming to strengthen the core supply chain this is very important strengthen the core supply chain in the sense how do you strengthen the sense strengthen the supply chain in the sense how do you create a sensitivity analysis so you you reconfigure supply chain produce more produce less for some products and see that what is the effect of the demand our demand is changing so you create a demand and produce items and whether you can sell it or not so that's why you are developing a some kind of scenario building create a scenarios and how do you realize that scenario so that kind of sensitivity analysis is very important that is what configuring the supply chain reconfiguring the supply chain with future uncertainties that's very important these are all different uh, strategies combating the disruption then if you go to next slide what are the generally the supply chain uh, faculty or teachers they look at physically what are the variabilities in the supply chain these variabilities will create demand variability demand variability and process variability and supply variability entire gamut of supply chain is going to be demand side supply side and process side of course i need not explain all these things in this uh, uh, variability and then we'll go to the next slide then what are the impacts impacts of pandemics impacts of pandemics and supply chains this is very important so this if you see the raw materials when you talk about supply chain raw materials and storage of raw materials and manufacturing and assembly then warehouse then for the market for distribution channel so storage of raw materials storage of finished goods and warehouse and then distribution channels so this is about supply chain but here the supply side supply shocks will be there and demand side demand shocks will be there these two forces are going to have a propagation propagation back propagation effect on distribution constraints so the, the supply shocks if you see lack of lack of raw materials lack of parts lack of workforce all these things are supply shocks but if you see the demand shocks holding and drop in demand and substitution of the products all these things are demand shocks so coming to distribution constraints trade restrictions trade decisions the borders are blocked and no movement of material and then workforce non available workforce and closing of the all the facilities all these things leads to distribution constraints so these these are the different uh, uh, shocks that are going to happen so these risks you can say these are the different kinds of risks that are going to happen and if you see the supply chain 
mostly the supply chain supply side helps uh, supply stocks uh, based on impact on elements of inbound supply chain so there is an inbound supply chain and outbound supply outbound supply chain is related to distribution of products to the customers and inbound supply chain is supply supply stair on supply tape to supply tape to supply to the manufacturing facility so how much quantity unable to meet the demand the quantity quality cost all these things are disruptions in the supply shocks and coming to the demand shocks outbound that's outbound so demand is there surge in the demand but you are unable to supply because of the distribution constraints and uh, coming to the again one more constraint that's operational constraints the transportation so it is ability to supply services and parts or components and all these things so the transportation activity distribution activity so this is this transportation activity is disturbed so the operational activity is going to be affected so that's why here if you see the transport chain bulk shipping to unit shipping to less than truckload shipping these are all different strategies that you can follow and if you see the supply chain risk management this is also when whenever you see the supply chain disruptions and uh, causing these these disruptions are causing supply chain risks uh, and how do we manage the risk so ultimately the cause and effect what are the causes and what are the effect the, the effect is failure to deliver on time non availability of the material availability of the product all these things so due to no stocks available due to carrier performance or uh, due to lead time is too short or quality problems these are the main problems that you can see and if you further see uh, if no stocks are available and there is no planning activity there is no capa capacity constraint may be a problem supply problem may be there and if the carrier performance is there or there is no communication there is no scheduling poor scheduling will be there and if you look at quality the process control problem inadequate supply problem and if you say lead time lead time forecasting so forecasting problems are there these are different supply chain risk management is a big subject you can see lot of projects can be done in supply chain risk management taking into consideration of uh, sometimes on time delivery or failure and quality problems all these things you can uh, take up as projects so if you see in general there is a survey of 400 executives promoted by world economic forum and action there they gave different uh, broad structure of uh, the supply chain risks uh, into demand risk and operational risk and uh, supply risks all these risks we have seen but how do what are the factors influencing these risks that is very important what are the factors any any supply chain any supply chain any global supply chain or any local supply chain so the environmental factor and then geopolitical factor and economic factor and technological factors so now the environmental factors we have seen earlier last decades so many natural disasters and other disasters whether extreme weather but here you see the pandemic pandemic is actually as per the um, survey they have um, supported uh, executives uh, performed the survey and this uh, the survey is giving the probability the risk levels and the mitigation how do, you, how do you mitigate the risk and these things if you say natural disasters uh, pandemic if you consider because our relevance of talk is on pandemic in the pandemic if you see low risk levels the 15 less than 15% so the, the these these risk the earlier uh, the earlier risk if you look at is only less than 15% but now it is more than more than because there are 215 countries involved in the pandemic so it is the risk is definitely more but the survey says that the recent survey says that it is only less than 15% that happened based on the previous data the current data is definitely is going to be but if you see the mitigation if you see the mitigation is uncontrollable the mitigation is under uncontrollable so for a pandemic the mitigation is uncontrollable and the fact other factor geopolitical factor if you see uh, political instability political instability and trade restrictions so the trade restrictions is going to happen now because of this pandemic and other corruption theft and illicit trade and the piracy all these things but if you look at the trade restrictions trade restrictions high risk will be there high risk will be there if you going to be greater than 30% and if you see it is also uncontrollable 
Now, coming to the economic factor, demand shocks. Demand shocks again, high risk will be there, and and is also going to be uncontrollable or uh, are influenceable. It's not uncontrollable. It's in the demand, influenceable, and the price volatility is also one of the factors influencing this uh, supply chain risks. And this is also high risk will be there, and the price volatility is going to have mitigation uncontrollable. And border delays, border delays, this is also having uh, average, average risk levels, average uh, probability, and current currency fluctuations is also average, and but uncontrollable. And then energy shortages is also average. So these things can be uh, average risk will be there, and impact will be less. But it is uh, influential are controllable. I can say partially. But technology is also one of the important aspects. So technology disruption. Technology disruption is uh, is a kind of uh, supply chain disruption. So ICT information communication technology disruption is high probability, and and also if you see infrastructure is of course infrastructure is very low, uh, but it, is, it depends on each country. And but now if you look at technology disruptions, is a, technology innovation is happening. And how do these supply chain companies are going to adopt these technologies, transforming into technology-enabled supply chains? This is a, a major challenge. Going to the next slide, if you see supply chain resilience, resilience is how you are going to see the, the stabilize. How are you going to stabilize the supply chain disruptions? And it is supply chain's ability to be prepared for unexpected risk events. Responding, how quickly are responding to the risks and recovering quickly to the potential disruptions to return its original situation or grow by moving to new, more desirable state in order to increase customer service, market share, and financial performance. These are all different uh, uh, kinds of uh, uh, to understand what is supply chain resilience. But if you see in the next slide, how do you build a, a resilient supply chain? resilient supply chain and this supply chain should be should have agility and faster to respond to the market needs and how do you analyze the risk supply risk and risk operation risk or other any other risk so how do you analyze the risk this is very important so if you are able to analyze the risk then definitely you are able to find out a solution to the problem and you can find out you can build a resilient supply chain so take the long term view and you see whenever you are going for investment, you are going for supply chain, supply base. Yeah, long -term so take a long term view and centralize looking at the short term goals and you have to take care of the long term view and centralize your risk monitoring. Again, you have a supply chain command centers. So many companies are going to have now supply chain command centers where all the information regarding the distribution, regarding the production, regarding the supply base, everything is and the repository of information at what at one place and uh, that is a supply chain command center and there they are going to take a decision based on the data that is going to be available centralize your risk monitoring and be targeted so what is actually required what is like so the targeted means targeted towards customers targeted to your um, technology and target to your increasing supply base and target to your so production delays all these things you have to look at and uh, communicate what you are doing. So communication across the information sharing, as, as we discussed earlier, the information sharing is very important across the company, within the company, within the stakeholders. Then coming to the evolve your approach through lessons learned. And also you have to, you have to evolve what are the lessons that learned. And earlier pandemic situations, what kind of situation you have faced, how do we come across? And how you are going to plan for this future. All these things are very important. These are all very simple aspects, but uh, each, each statement is going to have its uh, impact on building a resilient supply chain. Then going to, this, there is one uh, survey that is going to happen to have, a, a, to build a supply chain resilience. Accenture has given how you are going to mobilize the command center, as I told you, command center, initial response plan. Then you have to sense the Prioritize the new risks, implications of your supply chain components, products and services. 
then you have to analyze it then you have to configure to the networks supply chain distribution and supply chain network configuration and then you have to monitor the response and supply chain scorecard all these things are very important so this is the like a configuration then again you have to go for mobilizing so this is a cyclic process to operate execute the plan of your uh, supply chain regions go to the next slide if you see the industrial revolution just i'm coming to the next part uh, quickly we'll finish off uh, uh, the supply chain industrial revolution you have seen first industrial revolution and second industrial revolution third and fourth the first now we are into fourth revolution that's why we are talking about supply chain 4.0 industry 4.0 i think uh, the last webinar it is discussed widely so in the the industry of supply chain 4.0 internet of things iot and iiot industrial internet of things and also cloud cloud based cloud based component and also you have to see the big data analytics and then internet of things so here the, these things if you have to look at how do you build a supply chain 4.0 supply chain so industry 4.0 is just simply how you are going to take into account of digitization automation transparency mobility modularization network and socialization of products and process all these things are part of industry point for 4.0 so the industry 4.0 is uh, given some kind of challenges how you are going to make use of mobile devices iot platforms location detections and authentication fraud detection and 3d printing smart sensors multi level customer interaction all these things but here in this industry 4.0 how a supply chain 4.0 is going to be understood and the supply chain 4.0 is going to be uh, mostly the data and analytics to improve the operational efficiency create optimal inventory levels how do you create optimal inventory levels and buffer to reduce the buffer inventories and optimize the transport transportation planning vehicle routing transportation routing and number of trucks number of routes all these things can be optimized using this uh, data analytics and improving the end to end visibility of material flowing end to end visibility is very important and this uh, for this we have a rfid tags we have a iot technologies gps and sensors and the, then control tower for improving the operational efficiency of supply chain control tower all types of data are going to be translated into this optimization decision then customer experience is also one of the important aspects core of in the supply chain and uh, optimize last mile deliveries this is one of the important aspects and fleet management and customization and new types of business models are real time data intelligence and platform for new types of networks this is uh, uh, very important in the data and what are the technologies driving the supply chain supply chain 4.0 so internet of things uh, we are having the sensors and devices mobile solution tablet wearable sensors and cloud computing and cyber physical systems big data analytics manufacturing technologies and distributed ledgers if you see digital supply chain iiot as i told industrial internet of things this is very important for the manufacturing industries where you can track the machine what is the operation level operational efficiency and you will get a lot of information the machine breakdown machine reliability all these things are very important to improve the productivity and automation robotics and machine vision machine learning artificial intelligence and then you have additive printing 3d printing then you have blockchain the blockchain is the next generation supply chain of course the blockchain is how blockchain is really there's a big topic a blockchain how it is going to influence supply chain so this is internet of things every uh, item that is going to part of our life part of our supply chains like uh, home bed to mobile to car to refrigerator to computer and all enter everything how these uh, things are going to be configured using internet of things and monitor their progress and monitor their efficiency and productivity then this is how uh, if you see this uh, uh, the smarthi smarthi factory in india that uh, how these the sensors and the computers robotics automation is going to happen he is a, a part of supply chain 4.0 so future supply chains are going to be uh, robotics involved of course uh, to increase the productivity and quality and safety and cost effectiveness so supply chain digitization is very important one of the important strategies uh, in the pandemic uh, situation so blockchain how do you manage contracts smart contracts and uh, how do you 
autonomous transportation because that's a self transportation self driving autonomous trucks will be there and analytics will be there and then internet of things as we discuss and drone technology so the inventory management the drones the, the material handling will be there and how it is going to be kept in the shelf and how you are going to monitor the inventory levels with drone technology and robotic systems and then augmented reality and virtual reality so now you can plan your so the the, the customer to, to enable the customer how he is going to buy a particular product and service so before buying how he is going to look at the the products that he is going to buy like furniture and everything so augmented reality and it is going to create some kind of awareness and some kind of uh, um, brand preferences and cloud and digital platform and 3d printing all these things are supply chain digitization is a part of supply chain 4.0 if you see the next part of course this slide you can uh, now if you see the blockchain blockchain how blockchain is going to be so the each and each transaction that is going to happen between the companies between the supply chain partners so the information is stored at the blocks once it is uh, blocks the block wise block wise security will be there and if you see walmart is using the blockchain for visibility of the port of uh, sources from china and blog chain records exactly where each piece of meat comes from and where it is processed stored and it's a sell by date all this information is very secure information secure transactions will be happening and here if you see the blockchain uh, the the transactions are going to be in the blocks and and hash all the all the blocks are hashed where the hashing leads to high security nobody can will tamper this information and uh, other case study if you see alibaba transportation planning uh, how they are going to have a transportation planning vehicle routing optimization see that the diagram internal and external data that is used and they found out the optimum way optimal route to so see that they reduce the transportation cost reduce the time and finally how the customers are going to be happy this is one uh, classic case study that you can think of other case study is ibm they have used the blockchain nice blockchain here the exchange of event data handling document enabling and users to security submit stamp and also documents other documents then internet of things as you know that tracking and tracing the rfid where exactly then a transportation fleet at the fleet management where exactly the truck is there and how the truck is uh, how much distance truck is there how the delivery is going to happen all these things can be look at and you can look at the uh, the case study you can identify how this uh, uh, internet of things is going to be helpful augmented and mix, mixed reality that you also if you see dhl vision picking they have implemented this uh, object recognition picking sorting and goods inspection so there is no manual intervention will be there and the augmented reality mixed reality is going to look at all this 3d printing also customized production more production more customized production and reduce the transportation cost on demand and also need for warehouse all these things can be done in bmw case study is available and other initiatives like a drone and automation a drone delivery uh, delivery and a electrical cargo bike then you have a drone inventory drone is going to maintain and then robot process automation self driving trucks all these things are giving benefits flexibility accuracy speed and new type of services and of course there are 15 components of a smart factory future tomorrow the supply chain 4.0 is leading to smart factory smart factory how these technologies uh, digital technologies are going to be really transforming this uh, smart factories so what are the immediate actions that the supply chain can lead can lead the, the retailers retail supply chain with the customer demand so the suppliers what are the different strategies and what for much changing so for discretionary items and non discretionary items so this distribution activity distribution strategies and logistics and fulfillment if you see all these things we already discussed but these are the different supply chain changes that are going to happen and emerging supply chain strategies that are going to see here last mile delivery models the e-commerce supply chain like flipkart and uh, if you see amazon and all these uh, e-commerce models are going to be there and they are going to have a crowd sourcing strategy crowd sourcing is pooling up the resources pooling up the resources like car pooling and you are trying to find out the the crowd source that means that for for, the, for to enable to customer to give a faster service and reliable service and at at a lower cost the crowd sourcing is going to happen then parcel terminals then you have a electrical tri skills drone deliveries digital lockers 
all these things are new things that's why all these things are going to revolutionize this supply chain the future supply chain is going to be digital technologies for industry 4.0 like iot blockchain control towers artificial intelligence machine learning enabled forecasting rule based and self adjusting stock allocations and autonomous devices like uh, agv and drones etc and if you see the responding what is the uh, immediate challenge how do you respond to the immediate challenge while this covid 19 may be the catalyst for companies to revisit the global supply chain strategy and accelerate the adoption of digital supply chain network models and capabilities short term actions need to be made to respond to the immediate challenge this is very important how do you prepare your supply chain in the time of crisis only create continuity plans scenario building using the supply chain command data analytics and try to develop the problem area try to look at the solutions uh, problem areas and find out the solutions for different different demand environments then mitigate supply chain shocks so you have to work with the closely with the existing suppliers and create a supply chain supply relationship supply relationships vendor management and then that is very important How that mitigate the supply chain supply shocks and supply base increase the supply base and manage demand volatility so manage panic buying situations while taking on a responsible retailer role like masks and first uh, first aid kits a lot of panic demand will be there so how do you mitigate those risks that is very important make the work safe so give the work work environment safe and take care of the people workforce is very important and see that workforce should be motivated to work and also in the supply chain workers there should be a, a continuous relationship with the suppliers and and safety is also one of the important aspects and disaster preparedness so looking at all disruption that have happened disaster preparedness plan is very important supply chains need to adopt right technologies to provide inventory visibility across the distribution network and like you have a distribution center stores vendors third party offer these are all going to offer major benefits to flexibility and transparency to serve customers in a better way so there are different opportunities i would like to uh, stress on there are different opportunities that are going to going up for supply chain professionals supply chain people and students taking up supply chain so much changing of forms transportation industries consulting organizations logistic forms and service sectors this plenty of opportunities that are going to become uh, that are going to come because a lot of potential demand for manufacturing activity and supply chain so if you see the opportunities uh, for few prospective employees if you see hindustan river reliance dhl tnt blue dot ashok leyland coca cola all uh, transport corporation of india all these are all lot of the jet airways airline companies there are lot of opportunities for the supply chain professionals the last if you see so the rapid innovation is happening so this is disruption leads to innovation this innovation is anything the future requires simple and faster technology especially where users are concerned the quicker a company can go from a ideation to market adoption the better it can disrupt and probability influence possibly possibly influence market and business so we have to we have to live with the disruptions and come out with the innovations and how do you manage the risk this is very important that's all from my side thank you Thank you.